Hello and welcome or welcome back to Gold Harvest. In this video, we are going to be creating a pagination for our products page. We're mostly going to be creating functions and we're going to be using a lot of mathematics, but we're going to be using JavaScript in order to achieve this. Now, this is episode five of our Confi series. So please do check out episode one to four in the description down below. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, now before we start, uh, let's do a little recap of what we did in episode four of our Confi web series. So first of all, we started uh, by creating a list of dicks where each dick had or stored the type of product as well as the name as well as the price. Uh, we also created a for loop where we would store our uh, where we would be where we would display our products. So instead of using HTML for this, where everything would be stored in product content, we used a JavaScript for loop for this. Uh, so that we could avoid repetition. We also created a function where whenever a button was clicked, so for example, sofas or beds, uh, the background color of the button would change as well as the color in order to you know let the user know what content is being displayed. And we would also change the content itself. So for example, when it was in our products, we would get all of the products combined. For sofas, we'd just get sofas. For beds, just beds. And for chairs, just be uh, chairs. And last but not least, we also included a for each method uh, where we would process each button and make sure that whenever a button, uh, sorry, whenever a user was visiting the products page, uh, they would see all products by default. So for example, when I, when I reload this page, it is in our products uh, already by default automatically. All right, so I think it's only best uh, if we start by working on our HTML side of our project. Um, so we should create a new div inside of, inside of product type container. Uh, and this is where we're going to be uh, storing our buttons. So for example, first, uh, previous, next, last, and as well as our page number. so now we have included the paginator button section so this is how our buttons look like right now so we're going to be designing that also i forgot to add the class uh, that we're going to be naming we're going to be naming this button paginator and now that looks good so now we're going to be working on designing our paginator buttons Alright, so now when we scroll down and we check our pagination buttons, we can see that they all look very similar and uh, they also have an hovering effect and we've included all the buttons that we wanted to add. And now the next thing to add is its functionality. Alright, so now we're going to be creating our pagination uh, function, everything to do with pagination. Um, we've already included the or created the buttons. So now we're going to be creating three uh, variables. The first one will be first box index in which our starting value will be zero. Our uh, second one will be called boxes displayed per page. And in this case, just for this video, we're going to be creating three pages, uh, sorry, three boxes per page. And our last uh, variable will be called last box index. And that will be the sum of first box index and boxes displayed per page. So we're going to uh, put this under all products. All right, so now as you can see, we have created our variables. So now the next thing we're going to be including is our function in which our uh, pagination will start to take place. So our arrows will not be you know, there yet, but uh, we'll be able to control the amount of boxes being displayed per page. So we're going to create a new function and we're just gonna call this update page. All right, and now we're going to be creating a for loop in which we're going to be iter iterating through a list of products uh, that the user is currently viewing. So for example, whether it be all products, sofas, beds, or chairs. All right, so now you, as you can see, um, we have included our for loop. However, now we need to know uh, we need to get our all products displayed so we uh, actually need to mention update page this function somewhere and that somewhere will be uh, inside of button click so whenever a button is clicked um, a certain uh, list of products is displayed so we wanted to so we want to call update page here 
where we can update the page according to what content is expected uh, based by the user's clicks. So now we're going to be creating a new function and we're just going to call this all products displayed. All right, so now that we've got our variable in, um, another thing that we're going to do is remove flex and we're going to keep that to none. So now there's nothing being shown. And it seems like I forgot to put all. Okay, so now when we reload this, and obviously there's nothing at the moment since we put we set display to none, but when we click on uh, the buttons, we get our buttons. I mean, we get our content. Uh, so that means we also need to include uh, update page as well as all products displayed inside over here so that it can also be displayed by default. And now we get our content. Okay, so now we're going to be entering a very crucial part. So over here, when we scroll up to our update page function, we wanna, uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to limit the amount of boxes being displayed per page. So as we said, we only want three uh, boxes being displayed. So we want to make sure that as, um, as the loop goes on, as the loop iterates, we only want to make sure that the items that are being displayed as flex should be, um, should be equals to first box index or greater than first box index and um, I or the item should be uh, equal uh, sorry should not be equal to last box index but should be less than last box index so since uh, we're going to be uh, iterating uh, three items uh, we want to get the index of 0 1 and 2 so we want to make sure that last that I is less than last box index rather than equal to last box index all right, so now that we have included our if statement, if the item, uh, if the index is at least equal to or greater than first box index and, oops, i is less than last box index, then that item should be displayed. So now we can see that only three items are being restricted. And now if it is not within the range, then we want to make sure that the item is set to a display of none. All right, and now we're going to be creating our two most uh, crucial uh, pagination uh, functions. So we're going to be creating one that will take us next and previous. So we're going to start with next. So here we're just going to create a new function and we'll call it next page. And now uh, we also need to create an if statement and we want to make sure that the the last product that is being displayed or the last box that is being displayed does not exceed the total number of uh, products in total. So now let's create that if statement. All right, so now as you can see, um, if our last box index is less than all products that are being displayed, then we shall continue to add our value. So first box index should continue to increase by three and last box index as well by three. Now the second uh, statement that we're going to add is we want to add a method. So for last box index, if it happens to be that last box index is greater than all products that are being displayed that we want to make sure that that is not being looped over and that is not being displayed in our uh, i mean that is not being updated in our update page we want to add a method called math.min and we want to get the minimum value so whatever last box index is if it happens to exceed the number of products in all products displayed then we should use then the last box index should automatically be last box uh, last products oops last products display dot length and now our last line which we need to add is we want to update that in our update page all right so we want to create um, another function uh, which will be called brief page and it will have a very similar logic not exactly the same but similar logic to what we did for next page so we want to make sure we want to include an if statement once again and we want to make sure that first box index should not be updated if it is less than the boxes uh, displayed per page so less than in our case three so now let's include our if statement
all right so now as you can see um when we click on next or previous uh, nothing happens as we have not added our event listeners yet so we're gonna scroll down and over here we're just gonna add it right under uh, update page all right so now as you can see when we click on our next button we get uh three uh products updated and also when we click on previous so our function works so now the next thing that we're going to be working on is our page number all right so we're going to scroll up and we're going to be um changing or updating that in our update page so over here we're just going to be using pure mathematics literally and uh so our formula or the yeah the formula we're going to be using is n divided by three plus one so three is obviously boxes displayed per page so if our first box index is uh zero for example zero divided by three plus one is one so that means we are in page one so now let's um, implement that And now we want to um, include that inside our HTML and uh, our HTML, uh, which we have to scroll down. The name of it is page, the ID name of it is page number. And at the moment it's one by default. So now we're gonna collect that ID and we're gonna change the inner HTML or update the inner HTML. Okay. Oh, I just realized that I spelled it as number so if i go click on next it should give us two three four five six seven eight and when we click on previous it goes back as well so now that is done all right so now the last thing that we're going to be working on is our first page button and our last page button so we're gonna have to scroll down and over here right after uh, the click next and click previous we're gonna add another variable and we're gonna call this or we're gonna call the first one first page okay so we have included our variables and now over here we're going to create um, their event listeners so um, it's gonna be different this time so for first page we're gonna add an event user, uh, listener as usual and when the button is clicked, we want to perform this function. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is we wanna set first box index to zero and last box index is three. So it's gonna be very easy. Okay, so now as you can see, um, we also included update page. So we wanna call that and we wanna make sure that that is processed and that first box index is zero and last box index is three. So now um, when I go next and I click on first, I'm taken back to the first page. So it's simpler enough. Now, uh, last page is gonna be a little bit trickier, but um, doable. All right, so now um, we're going to be creating our last page on. Okay, so now our last box index should be pretty simple. So obviously it's just going to be um, the total number of boxes like available. Now first box index is going to be slightly different. Now um, uh, first box index should be the last box index minus the boxes being displayed. Now the thing is, uh, for example, if we're at sofas and for each category, um, sofas, beds and chairs, there are eight products. Now 24, for all products, um, there are 24 objects being displayed. 24 divided by three is, um, is gonna give a reminder of zero. However, when we divide eight divided by three, it's gonna give a decimal, a decimal number. For example, if I click on last, it's gonna give us a decimal number and we do not want that. So now we're gonna have to create an if statement. So now we gotta finish this with else. So we're gonna be using the formula that we used earlier and that is an update page. So we saw that when we used first box index divided by box displayed by uh, per page, we got page number. So now we wanna make first box index the subject of our formula. That means um, first box index will equal to page number multiplied by boxes displayed per page. So first we're gonna calculate the page number and um, the page number right before the last one is gonna be the total number 
divided by the boxes displayed per page. But we want to round that down. So we're going to use parse int. And now that we got our page number, we want to multiply it by the boxes displayed per page. And if we click on sofas and if you click on last, we finally get our last page. All right, so now that we have our pagination working, we can also change the number of boxes that we want to be displayed. So we can change this to eight since there are eight uh, types of products, so eight sofas, eight beds, eight chairs. So starting with sofas, the next one should be eight beds and the next one should be eight chairs. We can also go back to sofas or we can go back to chairs. All right, and now we're at the end of this video and we've achieved our goal to move to our next previous last and first page and also to view the page number that we are in. So subscribe if you haven't already, like this video and comment down below and we'll see you in the next video.